Hi everyone, I'm Joe from Empire Music, EmpireMusicOnline.com in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And today, I'm going to discuss a topic that we run into all the time with customers both in-store and from our website that are calling in. They want to know what is the best acoustic guitar shape to buy. And <clears throat> this is a question that all of us will run into as we look at acoustic guitars. And I wanted to kind of tackle it today in broad strokes, showing off some of the brands that we have. And this will apply, I feel, to basically any level of guitar you're looking for. <clears throat> if you're looking for a basic guitar, your first instrument, if you're looking for a high-end instrument, all of these things are gonna kind of hold true, equal to each other in those price points. So today, I brought a handful of guitars out here to show the different sizes and what you can expect in feel and in tone. So what's important to realize is these body shapes are not only made because there's people of different heights and different statures and builds, it's because we're trying to get a different sonic experience. So to get the best one, we want to know more about you. So when you call in, we always encourage people, give us a call, 412-343-5299. Our team here can help you find the right thing. But what we want you to do ahead of time is to consider is what type of sound you're looking for and what type of feel you're looking for. So today, right now, I'm holding a Taylor Grand Concert right here. So it's a beautiful instrument. To my right, I have a Fender Malibu, which is basically a parlor guitar. Then I've got a Taylor Grand Auditorium. I've got a Martin Dreadnought and a Gibson Jumbo. So these guitars are all gonna be built a little bit different inside with bracing to let them sound the way that the guitar is supposed to um, provide volume and output based on the manufacturer's needs. So obviously every brand of guitar is not gonna be synonymous inside. They're not gonna be just the same over and over and we can just say, okay, uh, Taylor Grand Concert and a Martin Double O are gonna sound the same. That's not true. But side by side compared to their bigger and smaller companions in the lines, you'll be able to get a pretty similar experience as a general rule. First things first, if you are a beginner guitar player, and we see this all the time, people come in with a guitar that they bought online or they went into a chain store and they come in with this massive hulking dreadnought, right? This big square guitar. Now, there's nothing wrong with Dreadnought guitars. Dreadnought guitars are probably, in terms of overall guitars sold, the most sold, you know, in terms of the size. And if you just Google guitar, you're gonna get a picture of a guitar that's you know, shaped like that. They're easy for manufacturers to build in the low end, and they can churn out many, many of them. The problem is they're enormous. I think that for all guitar players who are beginning, I don't care if you're any adult, you know, if you're from five feet to seven feet, I always suggest more of a concert style, no bigger than an auditorium shape. When we're learning the instrument, as we hold this guitar, what do we do for our seasoned guitar players out there that know, what do you do when you first get started? You start to learn your first chord and what do you do? You lean the guitar down a little bit like this, right? So now, what are we doing? Our arm angles changed. The guitar is not really in proper position, but we're just trying to get a peak. We're trying to look down. With a smaller body guitar, we can do that. If I grab the Dreadnought instrument, we're not gonna have that ability. It's gonna be much bulkier and much harder to maneuver. So now you saw me hold a concert. Now what do we have? Immediate changes. The first thing I notice is my right arm way up higher. A much different feel immediately. It's a much bulkier guitar and it feels good because I'm, you know, I play a lot of guitars and I own dreadnought guitars. So it's not uncomfortable or foreign to me, but if I'm trying to learn the instrument and look over, it's much more difficult to kind of look down the line and see where your fingers are. And if you're trying to pick accurately, having your arm up higher, it's a little bit trickier. When we have a smaller guitar, it's much easier to be able to watch what we're doing picking. Our arm's in more of a natural position. The smaller guitars, as a general rule, will have maybe a little bit shorter scale, maybe a half inch shorter, not all, but some, and that'll make the guitar a little bit closer to us so our, our strings aren't pulled as far away, so we're a little bit more comfortable, a little bit cozier feel. It's gonna allow for us to get more comfortable playing the instrument because the goal is always to be able to accomplish. We wanna be able to get better. So if we wanna get better, the first thing we have to do is put our hands on it and be able to reach down and easily see what we're doing and get comfortable with the instrument. You know, when we're out there looking for instruments, 
what's your order of senses that are going into effect? We look at the guitar first, right? Our sight, we see it and we think, oh wow, that is a really cool looking guitar. Or like, oh, I don't like the look of that guitar. But if we like it, we might pick it up. If we don't like it, we know we're not gonna pick it up. But once we know we like it, what do we do? Before we hear anything, we talk about woods, you touch it. And I can tell you that if I took almost all of our in-store customers that had never held an instrument before and just getting started and I handed them this guitar and then a concert or a parlor shape, they would all say the concert or parlor shape are more comfortable. There's no doubt about it. The instrument just feels more manageable. Now, you're gonna get a different tonal experience out of these instruments, and assuming that they're equal um, quality builds and equal tone woods, this guitar will be more loud, and this guitar will have more headroom, so if we wanna strum it extra heavy, we can do that. Whereas the smaller guitars are gonna be a little bit brighter, a little bit sweeter, but they're going to also respond faster. So we're going to talk about for different styles of players down the line. Um, if you're like a singer songwriter, or if you're a strummer, what type of um, body shape might lend to you. But for a beginner, it does not matter what a guitar really, really sounds like. I'm a huge proponent of it first being comfortable and being easy to play. You have to make sure that you're selecting a guitar from a guitar store that has taken the time to do a full factory setup on the instrument. At Empire, it doesn't make a difference if you buy this beautiful Martin or an entry-level $200 acoustic guitar. We do a full factory setup on the instrument. That makes sure that the neck is straight, that the strings are low to the fretboard, and it's easy to play. So I can go through a whole story about the tone woods and the build quality and all these important things. But if our strings are difficult to play and we haven't adjusted the instrument for a player, they're not gonna enjoy playing it. That doesn't make a difference if you're a beginner or a seasoned player. The big difference is for seasoned players, you're gonna play the guitar and go, oh, this needs a setup. And it's not gonna be the end of the world for you. You're gonna want the guitar to be set up. Not, not the end of the world. But if you're a beginner, you might not know that. And you're gonna go, oh gosh, this guitar is really hard to play or guitar is hard. And once we hear guitar is hard, and we hear that in the store often, someone buys a, a guitar from Amazon or it's a, you know, an inexpensive guitar from a chain store that's never been looked at. Well, let's take a look at that instrument. Is it a good shape for you? And has it been adjusted? So we take care of all of that stuff for you. But as a beginner, I would always tell you to lean to a concert no bigger than an auditorium shape. But most, I'd say, guitars that when you come into Empire, we carry you know, Fender acoustics that are called concert shapes or folk shapes. You'll hear some brands say folk that are this style. And this is extremely comfortable. And they sound beautiful. I mean, a guitar like this, this is a Taylor, so it's a high-end guitar. It's super balanced. It's real even. Is it the loudest, bassiest guitar you've heard of all time? It is not the loudest, bassiest guitar of all time. If you find yourself as a beginner wanting the loudest, bassiest guitar, it's all tell them. You can buy an instrument like that. There's nothing wrong with it. I feel, and especially we have a big lesson program here, so when we're not in a typical lockdown, we do 450, 500 private lessons a week. So we get many, many players of all ages and abilities. And I find that the players that stick with them the most have an instrument more along these lines. They're just more comfortable to play. And if we play an instrument this size and we play that for six months or a year or however long you like to you know, take your lessons and learn, as you become more seasoned, then these guitars aren't going to feel so out of reach. They're not going to feel so difficult to hold. You're going to have a working knowledge, but you're going to know how to play that G chord or that pesky F chord that's hard to play. We're not going to have trouble doing that anymore. We're going to be able to have done it. And then as we move into a bigger guitar, now it's, okay, we can do that because we're not so worried about looking down at our fingers. We can accomplish right away. And I think that's very, very important is our goal is to get better faster. And that doesn't mean getting stuck in the same place forever just for the sake of having a big loud guitar. This is you know, one of those things where it's like, if you're a beginner, you wanna pick a guitar for yourself. It's always cool to have help from buddies that play and things like that, but we wanna make sure is that when you're beginning that you can accomplish and you can learn because whatever guitar you buy is your first guitar, if you end up being a lifelong guitar player, I can promise you, you're not gonna own just one guitar. You're gonna own many, many guitars over your lifetime and you're gonna have the ability to buy all different types of shapes and sizes in all the different price ranges. Um, this concert, like I said, is something that you'll find in most brands, regardless of your price, from you know, 200-ish dollars up. Um, the parlor shape, which is even a little bit smaller, 
And this is a very popular instrument that we have from Fender. This is a Fender Malibu. You can see this one's even smaller. The body shape is tinier. So who would this something like this be good for? Well, obviously, as you hold this, this is even more comfortable to hold than the Grand Concert. I don't think that this would, you know, the Grand Concert would be like so bulky, but if you're a little bit shorter in stature or everybody has different kind of combination of height, right? How much leg height you have versus how much torso height you have. Some people have shorter torsos and they want something a little bit more snug to their body. This is great. And what's cool about these is these guitars will be real kind of like crisp and alive. So very beautiful, super articulate. Again, when you go to a little bit smaller body shape, your bass isn't gonna be as overpowering, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have a nice warm response and even, you know, output. So you're definitely more balanced. I think it's gonna be something that you'd find that would be real nice to play and sing over because they don't have to shout over. It doesn't create so much volume. They have to scream it, you know, over top of it vocally. So. If you choose something like this, this is definitely an outlier. These aren't as popular, but if I will say if you have someone that you're purchasing for in your life that is younger, that is wingspan is long enough for a full size guitar, but you can't because they're playing these big square guitars and they can't reach. So it shoves the guitar away from them, makes it difficult. Consider a parlor instrument. Fender makes some beautiful ones. There's many brands out there, but we have a great selection of these guys and we find them always to be successful choices for, for many students if people are beginning. Otherwise a concert shape, would be more of a traditional choice for a beginner. Now, let's say you tell me, Joe, I just need a little bit more volume. I need more output. Well, then you'd want to go with something like an auditorium. This is the Taylor Grand Auditorium. We also have Martin makes triple O and orchestra styles that we stock. Or, you know, Gibson has models in this shape. You'll notice about this guitar is it's deeper than the Grand Concert. So if we hold this up against a Grand Concert Taylor, so you can see the body depths this one is a deeper body. It's wider across the lower bout. It's wider at the shoulders. This one has a cutaway, which isn't really material to the, the feel when you're holding it, other than you have access to the higher frets. But this instrument is still really great because it's got cinched in waist, cinched in shoulders. You have this lower bout that's a little bit wider. So yeah, it's just like if you're a little bit looking for more of a, a more comfortable small feel, you'd want to go to the concert. But if you could handle this, this guitar gives us kind of the best of both. We get the nice balance of an evenness of the smaller guitars, but we get some of the output of the bigger guitars and a little bit more bass. So if you hear this instrument, What did you notice kind of right away? Definitely louder. It's a little bit fuller sounding. There's no denying that. There's more bass. The bass is punchier. Now this guitar has a rosewood. All the different tone woods are gonna impact these body shapes. But again, if you took this instrument here and took it in all the size, sizes, the tone differences would be similar across the board. The smaller guitars would have still have the characteristics of a parlor, would still be bright and punchy and articulate and responsive. The concert would be a little bit fuller than that, with a little bit more bottom end, a little bit louder. And then you'd have something like this to the bigger ones. So this instrument is great because if you see Martin triple O's or OM's or your Taylor Auditorium, Grand Auditorium size, the, any of the 14 or four body shapes, 14s or 24s, these guitars, we find it be popular because they're really, really full of life. There's plenty of volume. So if you do want that output, but you still want something a little bit more comfortable, man, see again, cinch at the waist, cinch at the shoulders, very, very comfortable. Now, if you're still a dead beginner, we want you to take, I think, the concert shape. I think that's the ideal scenario for all of your beginners out there. It's gonna be easier to hold than this and Typically speaking, when we're buying a concert guitar or a beginner guitar, we would be looking at maybe the $200 to $500 range. Everyone's budget's different. There's not a right or wrong, but you do need to invest about $200 to get a, a real guitar that I think you can learn on and consistently tune. And then we have Taylor guitars like Academy 12 models that are concerts that are $499 that are just knock your socks off. I mean, so if you want to go to a little bit higher end beginner model, 
that would absolutely do the trick. But most importantly, let's say you bought one of those style of instruments. You became more proficient, you're playing, you're enjoying it. Well, like I said, now we can upgrade to something a little bit larger. And that doesn't mean you have to spend way, way more dollars. But if you're looking to add some flavors to your type of tone profiles through your guitars and you want to have different responses and the ability to give us different sounds as a guitar player, you can change your tone woods and you can change your body shapes. But the body shapes will have a big impact, especially if you're going from something like this to this, you're going to hear big, big changes in output and in tone. You're going to get a little bit fuller, bassier sound here, a little bit sweeter, a little bit more articulate there. Now let's go back to the Dreadnought. The Dreadnought is a, a great instrument that, you know, Martin introduced the modern guitar and the modern Dreadnought. And that's why I selected one of these from our stock. This is a D18 Modern Deluxe, an absolutely beautiful guitar. The Dreadnought is almost, not quite, but almost equal from the bass, middle, and shoulders, right? It's not as exaggerated as a concert or the auditorium. It's not as cinched in in the middle. This allows for tons of output, more area. It's nice and deep. It can give you a lot of volume. It can give you more bottom end. But also, since it's wider, if you think about this, bass, middles, and trebles, right? You tap this guitar up here, it's very tight. So, you know, it'd be nice and bright up there. But as you tap it down here, big and bellowy, right? So we have that big bass section, but the mids are still wide, so we don't get something that's totally unbalanced. We don't get something that's not gonna be able to let you articulate between different notes. So when you strum this guitar, I have a D18, it's one of my favorite guitars, I love it. Um, just a really beautiful instrument, and each brand is gonna have its own flavor of tone. Taylor's sound kind of like Taylor's, and Martin's sound like Martin's, and Gibson's sound like, you know, Gibson's do. But again, whatever, when you're exploring, the truths are gonna be the same across the brands in the different shapes. So if you're a big Taylor guitar fan, or big Gibson or Martin fan, as you play their smaller to bigger guitars, you're gonna find these consistencies across their line. The hiccup here is again, if we're like a beginner guitar player, this can be a little tricky. I think it's too bulky, so I would never suggest this for a beginning guitar player. I think it's just too big. And the reality of it is, is if you go to a trusted guitar shop, or you call Empire Music and we take care of you, we're gonna tell you the honest truth about this because it's important, because your first guitar won't be your only guitar if we do a good job and you, you know, get moving on the right path. And the price is gonna be the same. You can buy a $199 Fender or any other brand that you like, Dreadnought and smaller body. You can buy a concert or a folk, you know, a Dreadnought at $199. You know, it's just like that exists across the board. So there's not a reason to, other than the fact that I think most of the time, if we go to those dreaded chain stores, your salesperson Shredder or whatever his name is, is going to wail away and this is going to sound bigger and louder and it's going to, oh, I would definitely want that. The problem with it is, is like you're not going to play the guitar like that as a beginner. We need to make sure that we are able to handle the instrument. And that's really, really important. The Dreadnought offers amazing tone and is very full and beautiful and is a great choice. But I would tell you, it's like a great choice for guitar number two or three, not guitar number one. Now, I brought another outlier. So we had the parlor on one end of our spectrum, which is a, a smaller guitar, which represents a small amount of the instruments that we sell. And then I wanted to bring in a jumbo. This is a new Gibson uh, Custom Shop J185. and what do you notice about the jumbo right away? Ooh, I mean, the bottom end is most exaggerated on this, right? Skinny waist, skinny shoulders, but man, really wide across here. Now, Gibson makes things called super jumbos. Taylor makes grand orchestras, which are even bigger than this. But this instrument is made to have the bottom end be really, really present and push out that type of volume, like from that area of the guitar. Now, the manufacturer manipulates this with the different types of tone woods. Like this has maple, which is a hard wood. So it keeps the guitar nice and balanced, but I don't need you to hear it.
really beautiful. The bass is super present. This guitar is actually pretty comfortable to hold in the grand scheme of things. As wide as this is, again, where it's on my leg, where I'm holding the instrument, we don't have to worry about it being too bulky here. I, th I think that's the biggest thing to realize with a dreadnought guitar is it's kind of square across. With the other shapes, we have kind of like that hourglass figure that will be in different proportions depending on the size of the instrument. So this is still comfortable through the middle of the guitar. Now, if you are looking, again, if you're playing like acoustic guitar in a bluegrass outfit where you're playing not plugged in and you need enough output, you're definitely going to want to go with a jumbo or a dreadnought. That's what these instruments, these are classic instruments. And if you think about when these guitars were initially designed, you know, it's like these instruments here, dreadnought uh, Martins, you know, Martin invented a modern guitar in 1833. Um, you know, it's just like you have shapes like this that were introduced and then this is like a 1950s style Gibson. What didn't we have? We didn't have acoustic electric guitars. We didn't have the ability to go, oh, hey, we're gonna plug into an amplifier or a PA system and get louder. Um, so if you're looking for that experience or you're miking a guitar in a studio and you want that big, full, robust tone, this is absolutely where you want to live. And as a seasoned guitar player, that wouldn't, you know, these shapes are going to be things that you're comfortable with and definitely be able to manage it. Obviously you would know that ahead of time, but it would give you those beefier tones and let you sound great. The auditorium shapes from Taylor, which are their signature shape is great because many of these guitars come with electronics from all the brands. So if you do want the sound of a you know different shaped guitar and you want to be loud enough, we're going to be able to plug in. So if you're obviously in a studio and recording, any of these would work because we can mic, mic it. But if we're getting together and we're playing at friends' houses or we're playing open mics or performing on the weekends, whatever it might be for you, the ability to plug in is a must in those instances. So at that point, how loud a guitar is isn't that important. And this is what I tell everyone kind of face to face. It's almost like looking at a wall of TVs at a place you could select TVs. Could you imagine having a big 80 inch TV, which just sounds awesome, but imagine if it wasn't high definition. So that's kind of like a big square guitar here that if it's not braced right, you have to be really careful that you're getting something that is gonna be nice and even. Now these are obviously made to a very high level, so you'll get that HD experience as well. But I'd rather have, if I had a choice between an 80 inch TV that was kind of blurry versus a 45 inch TV that was crystal clear, I'd choose that. And these smaller guitars will give you more of that definition. This, again, you know, it's just like very even through. So again, you get that nice thumpy bottom end, but you keep balance, you keep evenness, and you get the comfort. And now as we go smaller, and it's, you can note as I'm holding these instruments how they look against my body, the grand concert shape now, yeah, man, smaller, right? Right away, you can just tell. These are really comfortable. Most of my acoustic guitars are this shape. I prefer these because, first of all, I'm not a heavy guitar player. I'm not someone that is a real, real heavy strummer. You know, it's like, well, I love my D18. That's cool for like the big cannony stuff that I like, would like to do. As a general rule, I like to hear really sweet round notes and I like the instrument to respond right away onto my playing. And when you have a smaller guitar, it pushes the air out faster, it vibrates faster, so we can play delicately and get amazing tone. So you take something like this. These just feel great and they sound amazing with like no effort. So if you like to play softly, and I always think of this as more of like a singer songwriter guitar, if you like to play and sing, your voice isn't gonna be pressed to get over this. We're not gonna be shouting above the guitar, which really helps our pitch and obviously, you know, to keeps our throat safe and all that stuff from not having to scream. But the guitar is gonna be more even and they can definitely have plenty of bottom end regardless of your price range. They're not gonna be super tinny if you choose quality instruments and there are, good instruments and great instruments at $200. The expectation for those is a little different than if obviously you're spending $2,000, but all guitars are not created equally. Just because we spend $200, 
on brand X guitar, that doesn't mean it's the best. We really believe in Fender guitars. Their acoustics we think are phenomenal. Their fit and finish is excellent. And they've done just an amazing job over the last four or five years redefining their acoustic line. So we love their beginning $200 guitars. But as you get into higher end instruments, you're gonna find that these will give you so much. And I just love them because I'm, if I'm sitting on my couch on a Sunday and playing some guitar, I don't have to hold this big open guitar, big you know compartment, it's big and square. This is just nice and the box is small and it just feels again like kind of cozy, right? And then we have the parlor for if you want the most sweet, most tiny, most really like you're not gonna strum real heavy but you just want something that's got like, like punch a little bit of crispness to it. Is a general what I find in store and in my experience with all of our customers is that this may end up being a little bright for you until you spend a little bit more money. I happen to really like the Fender Malibu so we select them but you know, it's just like you will have a little bit less bass. So I would say the Grand Concert would be a killer choice for beginners. And obviously all these instruments offer really good options for you depending on the tone you're looking to get for. So if you're looking for an acoustic guitar or an electric guitar, but in this case, an acoustic guitar, we'd love for you to give us a shout. 412-343-5299. I'm Joe from Empire Music, empiremusiconline.com. Myself, Todd or Anthony can always help you out. We're here to give you personal service regardless of what you're looking for. We'll make sure if you select the guitar from us in store or online that it gets set up, full factory set up before it ships out. So it's ready to play out of the box for you, which is really, really important. We professionally pack every instrument. So I'd love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you could. And if you have any questions or you have a favorite that you saw below, go ahead and comment down here in the great YouTube section and give us a call again, 412-343-5299. I'm Joe Rabita from Empire Music empiremusiconline.com in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and hopefully I helped you find your next acoustic guitar shape that you're gonna be dreaming of. Thanks for watching.